to week 15 of GID 216, Motion Graphics for Interactive Media. Okay, so this is our last regular week of the semester, and we're going to finish up with our final tenet of visual literacy, semiotics. Now, uh, we spoke a little bit about semiotics in the first week of class, uh, going over sort of the basics of denotation, connotation, signs, and so on. Uh, this week, we're going to dive a little bit more deeply into it. Uh, basically, uh, you are going to consume these two videos here, a very short introduction to semiotics and this semiotics lesson. So check those out uh, on your own this week, and uh, we will then be doing a media analysis for the week, our final media analysis. Media analysis number four, all about design. So in a second, we're going to go over your choices for design, uh, but the rules of the media analysis stay the same as usual. You have the entire week to work on it, and your goal is to uh, analyze a given piece of design of your choice, uh, and then answer the questions to deconstruct it as thoroughly as possible. All right, so let's get into that media analysis for the week. So again, it's all about design. Same structure as before. There are a number of pieces of design that you're going to get to choose from, which we'll look at in a second. And your goal is to answer these questions as thoughtfully and as detailed as possible. So you're going to discuss the artwork with an eye towards deconstruction, analyzation, and documentation as usual. Remember, this is all part of our ongoing effort to uh, look more closely at things. So the basic categories for analyzing a piece of design are structure and intent. We have four questions here. Uh, regular old intent, uh, which we have here. Uh, typography use of color, and use of imagery. Now, by now, I saved this one for last because by now we have done enough work in this class in terms of understanding visual literacy, looking at some basic design elements, uh, thinking about things like color and imagery, and use of typography for your title sequence, that by now you've got a, some of the basics of design down and so you're probably prepared to go ahead and analyze this that said if you don't feel you know if you think to yourself oh i'm not really an expert in design i'm going to have trouble analyzing these don't worry about it just use your best instincts just like we did for movies and television and art the goal here is to use what you know and look very carefully at things and try to make as many uh, assumptions based on your knowledge as possible right educated assumptions so we're going to dive into that. Let's take a look at what your choices are. Here's the list down below. So the first one is a Bauhaus poster from 1969 by Muriel Cooper. This is right here. Uh, this is a poster celebrating the famed Bauhaus art school in Germany, which was founded by Walter Gropius. So this is sort of like a celebration of that. And it's done, of course, in a Bauhaus style. Um, so you can check that out. You definitely want to do a little more research into what the Bauhaus is all about. Uh, before analyzing this one, but you can check that out. Uh, the other one is the IBM poster by Paul Rand. Paul Rand was a famous graphic designer who uh, created logos primarily. Uh, he did a lot of other work, but he's really well known for his logos. Uh, this is sort of a fun version of the IBM Computer Company logo uh, that he developed for them. And as you can see, it's kind of a play on words, IBM. <laughs> now the M at the end, of course, is taken directly from the IBM Computer Company logo. So it matches up with that nicely, but the I and the B has changed. So definitely do some more research on who Paul Rand is and what his work is all about. All right, the third one is by Michael Barut called Inner City Infill from 1984. Uh, Michael Barut, uh, a very famous designer known a lot for his uh, dramatic typography work, as you can see here, lots of dramatic typography, um, huge divisions in space, lots of negative space, uh, really dramatic work. Uh, so Michael Barut's piece. Uh, then we have uh, the Jurassic Park book cover by Chip Kidd. Now, of course, you're probably familiar with the Jurassic Park movie, uh, but uh, the book cover, of course, came first because the book came first as written by Michael Crichton. So Chip Kidd is sort of a pop culture graphic designer out of New York. He does publishing design. Uh, he loves working in areas of pop culture. He's a big comic book fan. Um, he's worked in both of those areas. And so that sort of famous uh, attacking skeleton dinosaur uh, that was used in the Jurassic Park movie originated in this book cover design. 
Um, so certainly something to check out. And if you happen to check out Chip Kid on YouTube and see some of his talks that he's given, uh, he is a very uh, uh, fun character. He's, he's, a, he's a fun person to listen to. Uh, the guy knows how to give a talk. So certainly check him out. Uh, and this is another one you could possibly review. Okay, next we've got uh, The Diva is Dismissed from 1994 by Paula Scheer. Uh, Paula Scheer, oop, this one right here. Uh, Paula Scheer uh, is one of the first uh, female graphic designers to really make a huge name for herself. Now, this is not to say that there weren't other female graphic designers before her. There are many of them. A lot of them, you know, fabulously lauded for their work, but many of them hidden simply because of the sexism of the time. We've talked about in this class uh, already. Uh, the idea uh, that Saul Bass's wife uh, basically did just as much work on title sequences as he did with him and yet received little credit. So unfortunately, a lot of that happened. But Paula Scheer is one of the first ones that really got her name out there in a much larger, more pronounced way that she deserved, quite frankly. Um, and so uh, take a look at this. This is a great poster design by her. Okay, next you could choose uh, the Lou Reed poster by uh, Stefan Sagmeister uh, from 1996. Um, this is this right here. So Lou Reed, the musician, uh, uh, commissioned uh, Sagmeister to do this for him. Uh, and so again, this is a poster uh, promoting a new album that Lou Reed was coming out with at the time. Okay, next we've got uh, Nine Inch Nails uh, cover by David Carson. Oop, that's not it. This is it. So uh, David Carson is sort of known as a grunge graphic designer. Um, and so it works out nicely that he did a lot of the album cover art, the posters, the promotional work for the band Nine Inch Nails, which of course is really just Trent Reznor um, doing his work. And David Carson is a really interesting character in that... Um, his treatment of typography is almost as if he dropped it off of a tall building and then set it on fire. Um, his, his typography work is very different. It, um, he very much challenges his audience to try to read what he is putting on the surface. So anyway, this is a piece he did for Nine Inch Nails. So you can check that out. That's a possibility. Uh, and then your other choice uh, going completely in the other direction is by uh, Kate Morose. Uh, and it is a, her typography piece. Now, I say going in the opposite direction because while David Carson was very dark and grungy, Kate Morose is very fun and upbeat. She does a lot of hand lettering, uh, a lot of custom hand typography work in bright colors, uh, using space as fully as possible. Uh, Kate Morose's work is pretty amazing and upbeat and really rich in color. Okay, lastly, we have uh, a design called Beards by Herb Lublin. Uh, Herb Lublin is well known for morphing typography into illustrative effects. So, of course, this is called Beards. You can see the word Beards, and underneath this illustration of a person's face, you have it set as if it is that person's beard. So, he does a lot of these sorts of things. So, you can check out Herb Lublin's work and possibly choose from that one. All right, so those are your choices for the week. Check them all out. See which one you like best. Uh, decide on it. Maybe work with a buddy or a small team and work through thoughtfully answering these questions. All right, remember, it's due by the end of the week. I look forward to all of your analysis. All right, if you need me, you know where to find me. Online, email, etc. I will talk to you soon.